Are you ready for some more pinwheels? Kristen Som here and we are continuing with our Ginger's Kitchen Bench Pillow with our sponsor Binded by Stitches. So we have gotten really far along. So we have all of, uh, what is it, this, the first section done. Section one is completely done. And then we have our Christmas tree cookie block and our monogrammed uh, border block. If you chose to embellish your border block or not, some of us chose this fun uh, monogram design for it. And then we have our ginger girl. Isn't she so cute? Oh my gosh, I love her. And then we have our gingerbread bakery border block. So a bunch of us did gingerbread bakery on it. You can do whatever works for you, or you can just quilt it and leave it as is, whatever works. That's for border block number six. And then we have one extra pinwheel from before when we did our large pinwheels. And then we have those three, um, lollipop blocks all right that we will add the lollipop on later it'll be a little yo-yo that when we do our embellishments so how cute we are coming along like so well we are doing great so today we are gonna tackle the other pinwheels so the other pinwheels they are on page 10 of our booklet so grab your packet if you made packets for the small pinwheels we need two of them I think we need two of them right now, if I recall. I don't remember now off the top of my head. I think we need two now and one later. So I'm just gonna make all three. We need three of the small ones. And just like I mentioned before on our pinwheel, the large pinwheels when we did those. So um, one of the gals in our group, awesome gal, she gave us um, some information about sweet pea pinwheels. and. Um, it's a pinwheel that is done in the hoop. I adjusted it quite a bit to um, still have it be like piecing and then also to um, have the quilting on all of the blocks. So those of you that bought that sweet pea pinwheel, I sent it to you the adjustments that I had made to it. You have to show me that you purchased that that pinwheel block from Sweet Pea. It's block number three, if I recall, from the Dear Allison quilt from Sweet Pea online. So on this one, um, I am going to actually do the same thing, but a little different. So on the on the other one, I used this very, very adjusted file and put down all of the pieces and pieced them all. And I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this super easy way. So you can do the original way, which is the traditional pinwheel block. And I will add a link here um, for directions on how to do a pinwheel block. I've got actually quite a few of them. I've got quite a few videos because we've made them in various projects um, so I will add that link there and you can do the traditional method if you choose um, I am going to do the the original the easy one that is from sweet pea and I'm not going to do a bunch of adjustments to it so I'm going to do their way which is different so on theirs you put down one big piece of white fabric and then you do add like the little applique flip over the appliques for um, the pinwheel pieces so I'm going to do that the smallest one on that design is um, four by four or four and a half by four and a half. I don't recall exactly. And so it will have to be shrunk down quite a bit because we need three small pinwheels. And so I am going to um, bring it into Umbrellion's Essentials and just shrink it down. I'm going to shrink it to um, 2.25 so that we still have that quarter inch seam allowance. So like I said, that one will be done a little bit differently. We have our fabrics um, in our um, page 10 that tells you what fabrics and we'll go over that in just a second. But I'm going to do it a little bit different since I'm going to do the sweet pea method. And again, you can choose the original method. You can choose to try out this one. Whatever works for you is fine. Um, if you didn't, um, so I'm going to go ahead and just send an email with the the um, small pinwheel block for those that already sent me a screenshot showing that they purchased the design from Sweet Pea. I'm going to just go ahead and send you that email um, in the different formats for the one that just all I did is shrink it down and then I did have the extra quilting um, so that it goes on all of the blocks and that's optional you don't have to do that um, the sweet pea method only has the quilting on 
I think it was on the colored part. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So see this quilting, it came with the file from Sweet Pea, but it wasn't on the white parts and I wanted it on all of the parts. And so I just uh, copied that and then flipped it and made it really easy. So um, I, and then on the newer one for the small pinwheel blocks, we need that shrunk down a lot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, send you that as an option if you choose for those that purchased the design from Sweet Pea, those that have already sent me um, the file, the screenshot showing me that you did it, I'm going to go ahead and send that to you. All right, and again, you can do the traditional method. So let's go over the fabrics that you need um, depending on the version that you're going to do. So I'm going to go over the one that's in the book, um, but I'm going to do mine a little bit differently. So let's start with the small pinwheel blocks, the white fabric. So the one, the original one that came with um, the original kit way back when, it was a white hound's tooth, all right? White on white hound's tooth. This is the original one from several years ago, all right? But our sponsor, they sent us the white starburst sunburst something like that i don't remember exactly what it's called um but you can so either one of these will work great and in the book you're supposed to do six pieces that are two and a half by two and a half of this white fabric six pieces at two and a half by two and a half i'm going to do it differently i am going to actually just cut one big piece three of them because there's three pinwheels and i'm going to cut them at like three by three is what i'm thinking will work fine so three by three if you're doing the sweet pea method if you're doing the original traditional method then you want six pieces that are two and a half by two and a half okay and that's for the white for the red it is originally the red with Christmas dots on it and now that, that's the one if you bought the fabric kit years ago then you want this one or if you got from our sponsor then you have the red with white dots all right either one will work great and you want six pieces that are two and a half by two and a half. Six pieces at two and a half by two and a half. So I'm only gonna cut the white and the larger. I'm doing three by three, and I'm pretty sure that that will work fine. I'll show you in the, um, in the process in photos and if there's any hiccups or anything I will add that to the video but I don't think I'll need to cut these any bigger so I'm gonna leave these six pieces at two and a half by two and a half all right so you'll need that I did back mine with fusible stabilizer that's really optional pinwheel blocks totally up to you how you do that all right and then we're gonna use batting so for our batting we want three pieces of batting that are three by three all right three pieces three by three one for each of the pinwheel blocks and then we're gonna quilt this I'm gonna quilt the quilting that comes with the sweet pea pinwheel design so it's that one that I showed you that has it's got it's nice because it doesn't go over the center block that's the thing that's really nice it just has this little geometric design that does not go in over that um that center mark that gets really filled up all right so i'm going to use that you can use any quilting design that is two by two you want a quilting design that is two by two um, and I don't think Kimberbell has any that don't go over that center mark. I mean, you might just luck out and not have it go over there, but, um, any quilting design that you want is that is two by two. There is a quilting design from Grand Slam designs. I think it's Grand Slam designs on Etsy and they have a block that I have used in the past on pinwheel blocks because it doesn't go over the center. It actually quilts around so it's got like this almost like a pinwheel right it, it has like this little I don't know what you call it but a cute design around it and it never goes over that center mark so it is possible to find quilting designs that will not go over that center because that center gets really full and it's pretty hard to to quilt just watch it carefully if you use one of the cute Kimberbell designs um, one with the snowman I think is so cute but whatever you want you choose um, in a two by two quilting design all right and you don't forget your batting three by three all right, so I'm going to bring you over to the computer and I am going to um, quickly shrink down my pinwheel block and then I am going to put three in one hooping. And so you can do them separately, individually, or you can do three in one hooping, whatever works for you. And like I said, we only need two right now. You could do two now and do one later, um, or you can just get them all done and be ahead of the game, whatever works for you.
everyone, I'm at my computer now and I'm just going to quickly show you how to reduce that pinwheel design and how to put three of them in one hooping if you choose to do them all together. All right, so I'm going to open up in Brilliance Essentials and the first thing is always to check what hoop size you're on. It says I'm on my 9 by 14 hoop. I definitely don't need that big. Um, let's see, I could probably even do... Might even be able to do my six by six. Let's start with that. Let's see how we do. So I'm going to go to the preferences folder and I'm going to choose my hoop size. I'm going to do six by six. I might need eight by eight, but let's just see. All right. And then click on this compass button and click H for hoop. So it zooms into your hoop. All right. I'm going to start by bringing in the design. Normally I bring in the quilting design. So if you're doing the um, the traditional method, you'll want to bring in the uh, quilting design first and then the pinwheel design. I'm going to use the Sweet Pea one that has the quilting Im embedded in it, so I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm going to go to Merge Stitch File and I'm going to bring in, let's see, Ginger's Kitchen Pinwheel Block. And I have a Pez original block with added quilting. So this is the one that I did. Let me just double click on that so you can see it. This is the original one, um, but I added the quilting because remember I said it only had the quilting on the colored fabrics and not on the white. And so all I did was add in the quilting. If you look at your design down here, I took that and I said control C, control V to paste it. And then I just flipped it. So that made it really easy so that I have the quilting on all four parts. That's totally optional. You don't have to do that. Um, but for now, I'm just going to click on the entire design. You can click up here and drag, or you can go up to the beginning and just click on the very first part of it, and that will get all the parts of it. And then right up here, see where it says the size? I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to say 2.25 and hit return. And what that does is it makes it, since I have it locked, sorry, uh, excuse the coughing. Um, my husband is coughing, even though I told him I'm filming. <laughs> sorry. So two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Um, so it shrunk it way down. And like I said, I'm going to have to test it and make sure that that'll be okay. But I'll let you know if it's a problem. All right, so that is the size that we need. I'm going to go ahead and take it up here. Now, we've got a lot of red and lime greens. I didn't even think about that. We'll have to change these colors because um, if we were to do a color sort to do all three, or you can just keep it, we could, that actually is not a bad idea. We could um, do one at a time just so that you're not dealing with the fabrics and holding them all down. Totally up to you. You have to think about how comfortable you feel with the pinwheel blocks holding them in place if you have like three or more um, in one hoop. You could just have them all in one hoop to save on stabilizer, but do one of them at a time. That is something to consider. So if you do that, then you wouldn't, you wouldn't need to do a color sort, but then you're also doing your fabric separately. You know what? I'm going to go like really simple tonight. I'm going to not do a color sort. I'm going to do the three of them, but I'm not going to do them all. I'm not going to do a color sort. You can do that. You know how I've done lots and lots of tutorials on that. I think I'm just going to keep it simple and do one at a time, but do all three in one hooping. That's different, huh? All right, so I'm going to click on that. I'm going to say Control C to copy it, and then Control V like victory. It pastes right on top of the first one, so I'm just going to bring it over here to the second uh, or to the right hand side, and then I'm going to say Control V again to get a third one, and I'm going to bring it down here. And now I have three in one hooping in my six by six. There's plenty of room. And I'm just going to do them really simple today. So I'm not going to deal with, although doing the quilting, it'd be nice to do all the quilting together. I'm not going to, I'm going to do super simple today. Super simple, long, long day. I'm going to make it super simple. And, and you do know how to do your color sort if you want to have, if you want to spice it up a little bit. All right. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say file, save, stitch, file as. And I'm going to name it, let's see if I go to Ginger's Kitchen, Pinwheel Block, and I'm in X 
exp if for some reason I need to go to PES. All right, and I'm going to say small block, small pinwheel um, with added quilting. That's what I'm going to do. All right, and I've got all three together. So that, that was really simple. That's what I'm going to do. Um, my machine's not on, so I'm not going to send it to my machine. Super easy, simple. We're, we're going for easy tonight. <laughs> All right.
my shirt today is do what makes you happy i like this one this is a designs by juju design i might have already worn it during this um set of tutorials i don't recall off the top of my head but um really cute design i will add the information underneath this video of where you can get the design it's got a lot of really cute designs in that pack i like this one a lot um the shirt is an old target shirt i think like really old 20 years old or something like that <laughs> but don't forget you can always check into my amazon storefront i'll add a link here and there's lots of links there for shirts that i recommend for embroidering on all right <laughs> how are you doing with your goal i love hearing about your goal don't forget to share in the comments tell me what your goal is how it's going hold yourself accountable i want to hear about it so mine is various mental health topics so i pick out a couple of words and tell you some things that I have found helpful. So today I'm going to do an easy one. I'm going to say movement. So movement, you might not think is, is really um, important with mental health, and yet it is. Let me tell you, it really is. So um, movement gives you endorphins and makes it so that you, it's like a happy pill. Endorphins are like a happy pill. Like seriously, it makes it so that you can handle various stresses in your life. It makes it so that your outlook is better. It, you, it, getting movement is really important. And it's really funny because when you're not getting movement, and you're you're you know sitting on the couch too long watching too much television doing doing stuff that is not really good for your body or your mental health you start to go down this rabbit hole and getting movement it can be hard because once you're down that rabbit hole you're like oh, i'm lazy i don't want to do anything i don't feel like going out and doing something whatever whatever and it it's a it's a destructive pattern and it's hard to pull yourself out because you're already down in that rabbit hole. So I would just really recommend if you find that you're having a hard time with something, if you're getting feeling stressed, if you're getting depressed, anything like that, get your body some movement. It makes such a big deal. It's, it's such a big difference. Really, it does. So today I just got back from an eight mile hike and it, it can be a little too much too. <laughs> <laughs> so it was 100 degrees today and I'm doing this Boise Trails Challenge and um, finding all these new places to hike and 100 degrees I brought like 80 ounces of water and I didn't have quite enough the last like two miles I didn't have enough water and it felt like my mouth was full of sand I was so thirsty and so tired and hot and so it can be too much too so just keep that in mind some of us that tend to push ourselves a little bit too much there's a negative in that as well but getting movement is always a good thing so like as, as soon as I ate dinner and drank a ton more water I had another 60 ounces of vitamin water which has electrolytes in it that helps your body because you're depleting all of that when you're out hiking like that um, so water and vitamin water or Gatorade whatever works for you as soon as I got all of that like I feel so much better I feel so much better it's so important to get movement so tell me how you are doing with your goal <laughs> 